<laughs> Philosophy is a net designed to catch water. What do you think of that? Philosophy is a net designed to catch water. What do you think of that and who do you think said that? Besides me. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Who said that? Philosophy. If I remember right, philos means knowledge and sophie is sophia, which is love, so philosophy is the love of knowledge. Knowledge as in intellectual knowledge. So... The idea is that philosophy... Intellectual knowledge is... It's a piece. It's a tiny, tiny piece of the universe like a barely detectable fractional sliver of the universe. And it's trying to capture what is within the teeny teeny framework of head knowledge or mind knowledge. You can't capture any of it. That's the whole point. And there isn't a you to capture it. So it's a... <laughs> it's a paradox trying to capture a paradox. It's a phantasm chasing another illusion. Gr grasping at anything. That's what it is. Is it possible to capture water in a, in a net? I don't know. Your mind is a trap, period. 
if the mind is anything even close to what Castaneda was talking about, or I'm always confused about the titles of that book and who's the actual author, or if there is an author, because Carlos Castaneda was apparently the guy in real life, in real life, <laughs> whose who's shaman was Don Juan, but also... I don't remember if the book's author was listed as Carlos Castaneda or if it was listed as somebody else, so I don't know. But if there's even a grain of truth to what Don Juan says in the book about the mind being coming from an alien source, our mind that we consider to be ours. And then if you look at how choppy the life is, it's not harmonious. It's all diced up into abstract little pieces that don't make sense from the spirit point of view. And that's what part of us is always wanting for these things to coalesce together and stop fighting one another because it's within ourselves that all the fighting is happening and from a heart soul spirit level we can't understand why all this is happening from a mind level you can understand it of course because the mind as you well know can and will rationalize everything that it needs to if it needs to rationalize why rape and murder is is correct it will if it needs to rationalize why there should be tons of homeless people everywhere and why we shouldn't feel sympathy for them, it will. And you will believe it. And you do believe it. Because if you didn't believe the rationalizations of your mind about atrocities, then you would literally be running out of your door right this second and banging down everyone else's doors and saying, what the fuck? Are we allowing to happen here? And you don't do that, and you won't do that, because your mind rationalizes why it's better not to do that. And it could be right. <laughs> Who knows? What I do know is that the mind is in... It's, it's incredibly powerful at what it does, and it also doesn't touch the, the real reality. It doesn't touch it. Not really. The feelings are what, where the power is. You know, when your whole body fills with light. When your whole body fills with this tingling energy. When you're having a moment with someone you love or a pet. Or just some something strikes you. That's where crying comes from, where tears, where all the emotions, you, we can't explain any of them, but they're all cleansing. Even the rage, even the hate emotions. Every single emotion, if you don't suppress it, cleanses the system. The mind, though doesn't like that the emotions are more powerful so it tries to minimize any uh, appearance of the emotions because whenever an emotion happens in say a wife or a girlfriend or a partner from the husband boyfriend side of it you're immediately asking what's wrong and what can I do to fix it? That's a mind perspective. The emotion just wants like emotion from the other person. That's all it wants. It wants camaraderie. It wants a hug. Good night. <laughs>